A few months ago, I wrote a basic keylogger program in Python. Now, the keylogger that I wrote a few months ago was pretty basic. It's usually the one that you will see mostly written in Python, which is basically to import a Py input module, add a keyboard listener, and then send those keystrokes to an email. This time, I want to create something that's a little bit more advanced, but I don't really want to reinvent the wheel. I found this Udemy course, Python Ethical Hacking, Building an Advanced Keylogger in Python 3. As I scroll down to the curriculum, I saw some more advanced features that I could implement, and I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, but I'm also not going to just follow along with this course. I really want to put myself knee deep and see if I can add some of these advanced features without any guidance. Well, video guidance. After a little bit more of Google searching, I have created an outline for this advanced keylogger. So here are the features that I want to accomplish. I want to save every single key in the special character, and I do want to get the computer information, including like the RAM and the OS, and maybe the IP address. I want to gather the contents of the clipboard, and maybe implement a screenshot and microphone recording feature. This is a targeted attack, meaning I am not going to spread this to the masses. I would only spread this to a victim that I would select. And the platform is Windows. So I'm gonna do this in a two-layered approach. First, I need to see if I can create a basic keylogger and compile that into an executable so that I can run this. So here's, here's what I mean. I have the victim machine and the first three features that I want to add in are the logging keys, getting the computer information, and gathering the clipboard contents. I'm going to put this to a log file, uh, which is going to be on a directory, some location on your Windows home, and after 24 hours, or every 24 hours, a time clock, it's going to send to an email. Now, I want to hide these features or this program behind an executable, maybe some sort of bogus program. Obviously, I'm never gonna spread this, but I just wanna see if I can execute it so that I can start creating these features. Now, layer two is a little bit different. Basically, I'm gonna have every single thing that I did with layer one, except this time, I want to see if I can implement a little bit more advanced features, which include taking screenshots and maybe recording with the microphone. Here's my thought process. I have my machine and I send some sort of signal to the keylogger program once it has been downloaded on the, the victim machine. And I send a signal to it and it automatically will take a screenshot or start recording with the microphone. Then I can either have this these screenshots appended to the log file if that's even possible or I will have these screenshot and microphone recordings sent to my email. So a little bit more advanced and it may not be able to be accomplished, but that's my initial thought process. So an advanced keylogger in Python without any guidance, just myself, maybe Stack Overflow and other documentation. I wanna see if I can do this, maybe. So without further ado, start the time lapse. finished the beginning features of this keylogger and let me show you what I mean. As you can recall from the introduction of the video, I decided to do three different features. Log all the keys, gather the computer and network information, and gather the clipboard contents and put this into a log file. This is what I've done so far. I basically used four different libraries to accomplish these three different features. The Pi input module was used to log all keys. The socket and platform libraries were used to gather the computer and network information. 
and I got the clipboard data by using Win32 clipboard. If we run this real quick and we type in some string of text like hello grants, you will see we <clears throat> have our system.txt here. So this is our system information. The IP address is commented out because I don't really know my IP address. And I have the clipboard data, which had the hello grant contents. I can show you that, control V, there you go. And also my key strokes. So the next thing is I have these in a log file, but let's see if I can get this log file to be sent to my email. And then I have to create some sort of timing machine so that every 24 hours, it sends a new log file to this email. So I'm kind of an idiot. Let me explain. I was working on getting my schedule schedule figured out, okay? And I was trying to go, I looked up some code on Stack Overflow, thank God for Stack Overflow, and I was trying to figure out how to make a time interval to set a specific time at when this email would be broadcasted. So like every 24 hours, I would get a new email attachment with the new key logs. All I needed to do was import the sleep function and add like four lines of code here. Ha, <laughs> that wasn't it either. I have written the features on the keylogger. Internal stopwatch, which log keys for a certain period of time. Okay, this is like the works of Python driving nuts. Three hours, I tried working on this timer function. I, my logic, I guess, was a little bit worse. I had this process that I was gonna try doing. What I'm trying to do right now is figure out if I can get these keys to be logged. <sighs> I've been working on this all day. Well, this didn't work out. Worked on it all day. I just decided to quit. Psych. I got you. Ah, I actually, something actually did actually click. What I need to do is I need to find a way to close a log file based off of a certain parameter or value. This could be based off of like a time that I tried doing this morning, or I could do it based off of like word count. So after a hundred words are typed in the log file, it closes it. So a certain value needs to be used. And then once this log file is closed, all I need to do is send that to my email. So I can change the time value here. So right now it's just every 10 seconds, but you can change that. And the value is after every three keystrokes. Really the value is here just to, for me to understand how the process worked. And then I created this, the time, which is what I'm gonna use. So after every 10 seconds, an email is sent to my email, of course, and I am able to gather the keystrokes after every 10 seconds or whatever. Yeah, so now my hair is crazy, I just woke up, don't worry about it. I have completed most of my keylogger now with the features. There's one version that has the microphone, and then there's one version that doesn't have the microphone. And the reason is because I couldn't figure out how to record the microphone while logging the keys. Now, I know that you can probably use the threading module, and I tried doing that, but I couldn't figure out how to start both of them at the same time. For some reason, the logging of the keys wouldn't happen at the same time. They would first log the microphone recording, then it would do the logging of the keys. After many hours of trying to figure out how to build this more advanced keylogger, I think I have finally figured out a solution. So here are my features and here is how this keylogger works. I have a lot of imports coming in, which may make it very hard for me to compile this into an executable. We'll see. You have your default variables, including your files, your system path, and then the time iterations that you want to have for this keylogger and also the email controls and yeah, the email passwords there, but it will be deleted. This has the, some key features, including the sending to the email, getting the computer and network information. Uh, and so I'm gonna be able to get like the IP address and I'm able to get the IP address even if it's uh, on a VPN. So right now I'm on PIA or private internet access VPN. 
I also have my microphone functionality. I get the clipboard contents after every iteration. I get a screenshot and then I get the logs of the key logs written to a file. And so basically how this works is it's done on a time basis. Right now, for demonstration purposes, I'm doing it as 10 seconds. Um, so every 10 seconds, it takes a screenshot, gets the clipboard contents, and it gets the key logs, and it sends that to my email. And so you could do it like every, I don't know, two hours or something like that, and you can do it for like 5,000 iterations. All right, so I have my uh, blank folder here. Uh, usually I would use some, I don't know, I don't really even know which like location you should use, but I'd, I would use like C users public roaming or something like that. I have my empty email address and let's see if this will work. And the first thing it does is get the system contents. And the next thing it does is it gets the, the microphone. So I'm talking into the microphone right now. Next thing is it gets the screenshot, clipboard contents and the keys. Here we have all of the emails. We did this for two iterations. So we get the system information in our email, like including IP address. We get our audio, Wait, the tense, the processor, the IP address. And the next thing it does is it gets the, the microphone. So I'm talking into the microphone right now. And so there you go, it gets the microphone. It then gets our first iteration of key logs, including all of these key logs. And then after that, we get a screenshot of what is going on. So here we are. Oh, I see we're on some pie charm. And then it will redo the iteration. It will get the clipboard contents also. Oh yeah. Uh, after that is done, give me a moment. Boom, there it goes. It deletes all of our files. We no longer have files. We have cleaned up our tracks. So that is how the keylogger works. Now, we're gonna at least try. We're gonna try to put this in an executable and see if it will work. I don't know, I don't think it will, but uh, that's the next step. Yep, didn't work, but it kind of, it didn't and it kind of did, I, I don't know. So I, I, I came up with a different solution. Damn, well, dang, well, no, I can't do that. Let's try doing that again. Well, I couldn't figure out how to make this an executable, but that really wasn't, the subject of what I was trying to do. I was really just trying to create the features of the keylogger. So I guess that's uh, that wraps up the video. I, I guess, well, well there's, there's an email. Hold up, hold up. Get your free game. Hi, my name is Grant. Some sort of developer loves creating games. Get access to the game before the public sees it and get my input because I am talented. Best game in the world? Are you kidding me? I'm getting the access to the best game in the world. That was so stupid. I'm just trying to act. So, that is it. That is it for today's video. It was a really fun project. I'll throw this up on GitHub. And um, if you guys want me to do like a little like crash course on this, let me know. I don't know, it really wasn't that complex and I'm really not that good of a coder or a programmer or a scripter. Uh, I'm not usually, I'm not good, I'm not professional any, any, by any means. One of the things when it comes to these projects that I try to tell myself is it's a lot of trial and error. Uh, if, you could, if you looked at my PyCharm project, I had tons of Py, Python files that weren't even going to be used. It really, it's about trial and error and continuing to try, to try to get your end result. So that is it for today's video. If you guys have enjoyed, please consider subscribing. And until the next time, have a good day.